So what's the consequences of men not passing on the Catholic faith to their children? As a man, how do you protect your children when you are not around? What can you as a man do to stay out of divorce court? What's the most important factor you should consider when dating or courting a woman? What is a holy lover and why is it vital men become one? Get the answers to these questions along with relationship advice that actually works. Listen to the Catholic Alpha Radical Podcast now. Hello and welcome to Marriage Unchained, the art of one flesh, where saving marriages, saving families, and saving souls is the flavor of the day. Now, let's join our host and author of Marriage Unchained, Catholic Alpha Radical, Jerry Jacobs Jr. Hello, welcome to episode 16. Today's focus, man crisis, marriage crisis, the battle for masculinity. So sit back, relax, take a chill pill, and get ready to rock, but don't duck. Can you feel it? Catholic Alpha Radical, coming at you now. Hello, and welcome to Catholic Alpha Radical, a Catholic relationship podcast giving you winning tactics for marriage problems, girlfriend problems, and intimacy problems for men. Moreover, where my main mission is to keep you out of divorce court and where marriage unchained, the art of one flesh, divorce combat coaching is the flavor of the day while also helping men understand marriage and courting, not dating, in the Catholic faith. Why? Because dating is for sex and courting is for marriage. This is episode 16. Bam! Our first segment is the quote of the day. So, Let's do this. Quote, if love does not climb, it falls. If like the flame, it does not burn upward to the sun, it burns downward to destroy. If sex does not mount to heaven, it descends into hell. There is no such thing as giving the body without giving the soul. Those who think they can be faithful in soul to one another, but unfaithful in body, forget that the two are inseparable. End quote. Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, three, to get married. Please remember to share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. Welcome to our next settlement segment, the Catholic Alpha Radical Rant of the Day, entitled The Cowardice of Men, the Top 21 Reasons Men Have Caused the 2018 Scandal in the Catholic Church and Why We're Not Going to Take It Anymore. And before I start, as usual, this will be a 21-episode series, one per show. Also understand that the infiltration by the Catholic Church with same-sex attraction and radical feminism, plus the watering down of the faith and the stripping away of the Latin mass was planned in order to destroy the morality of those within the church, priest and laity, and is not the teaching of the Catholic Church. 
Why was this done? One, to destroy the American family. Two, to destroy our morality in the country. And three, to destroy our patriotism. Why? In order that we become susceptible to communism and its ideas. Communism has not went anywhere. If you want more on this, please refer back to uh, Catholic Alpha Radicals uh, episode number two. Wow, that was uh, 14, 14 shows ago. <laughs> anyway, many people want to bash or worse, leave the Catholic faith because of the current scandal. This is complete ignorance and, un and disloyal, okay? That's exactly what, what the evil one wants you to do. Satan wants you to leave the church when stuff goes wrong. Why? Because it defeats what God's trying to do, okay? Um. Also, we must understand that there are many Judases among us. Are you going to abandon Christ too? Are you going to be a Judas? You're going to jump out? You're going to go jump off and kill you, hang yourself? Come on. You can't leave the church. You have to fight within the church. Got it? Good. Moving on. So, Let's get started with number 16 of the top 21 reasons that men are responsible for the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church. But first, let's review the first 15. Number one was refusal to accept our role as men. Number two was men allowed, we allowed the men in the Catholic Church, popes, cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons to water down and dilute the teachings of the Catholic faith. Number three was, men didn't fight for Christ during Vatican II. Number four was, an unwillingness of men to sacrifice for Christ. Basically, selfishness. Number five, men have nothing they are willing to die for. Number six, we have begun raising soft and selfish boys, a.k.a. wusses. Number seven, men don't understand our mission and purpose as men, to protect, defend, and serve. Number eight, we didn't crush feminism. Number nine, men didn't crush the Protestant revolt. Number 10, men didn't crush contraception, a.k.a. birth control. Number 11, men didn't crush abortion. Number 12, Men didn't crush so-called same sex marriage. Number 13, men didn't crush no fault divorce. Number 14, we didn't crush ecumenism. Number 15, men have stopped praying. So before each number, I will read a quote directly from the document containing Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano's testimony so that you can understand the gravity of this situation and move to destroy and speak out against this in your environment, your church, your family, your work and society at large. And look, I'm going to say what I've said before. If you don't speak out, if you don't understand what's going on, if you don't know your faith, if you don't know why this stuff is going on, you are being completely out of touch. You are doing a disservice to your your girlfriend, to your wife, to your children. You're not being a true man. It's time to get our head out of the sand, fellas. It really is. All right? And if you don't say anything, you are contributing to this evil. Next, I'll also place a link to the full document in the show notes. So let's read our next quote for show number 16, Archbishop Vigano's and his testimony concerning the great church scandal of 2018 concerning Cardinal McCarrick. Quote, back in Washington, everything became very clear to me, thanks also to a new event that occurred only a few days after my meeting with Pope Francis, when the new bishop, Mark Sates, took possession of the Diocese of El Paso on July 9th, 2013, I sent the first counselor, Monsignor 
Jean-Francois Lethume, while I went to Dallas that same day for an international meeting on bioethics. When he got back, Monsignor Lethume told me that in El Paso, he had met Cardinal McCarrick, who, taking him aside, told him almost the same words that the Pope had said to me in Rome. The bishops in the United States must not be ideologized. They must not be right wing. They must be shepherds. I was astounded. It was therefore clear that the words of reproach that Pope Francis had addressed to me on June 21, 2013, had been put into his mouth the day before by Cardinal McCarrick. Also, the Pope's mention, not like the Archbishop of Philadelphia, could be traced to McCarrick as well, because there had been a strong disagreement between the two of them about the admission to, commun to communion of pro-abortion politicians. In his communication to the bishops, McCarrick had manipulated a letter of them of then Cardinal Ratzinger, who prohibited giving them communion. Indeed, I also knew how certain cardinals such as Mahoney, Levada, and Whirl were closely linked to McCarrick. They had opposed the most recent appointments made by Pope Benedict. For important posts such as Philadelphia, Baltimore, Denver, and San Francisco. End quote. Again, we have um, one cardinal, one bishop against another. Again, um, Archbishop Vigano is putting together a story for us. Now, we can choose to disagree. We can choose to not believe it. We can choose whatever we want. But you must understand, man, a lot of uh, bishops and, 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 and priests and, you know, and, you know, they have become cardinals as well. You know, they're all priests, but they have become politicians. And what do politicians do? They work behind the scenes trying to get what, what you know, get what they want and get ambition. And who's getting left out in all this? I mean, let's just be real. I mean, Christ. Christ is getting left behind. There are only a few men leaders fighting for Christ, fighting for God's word. And 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 it's it's really it's really disheartening. And I try to feel empathetic, you know, because I know that that's what we need, but we also need the truth. We also need men in the church, lady included, to start standing up and willing to take a gunshot for Christ. We must begin to pray every day that we have the courage to stand up and fight Satan. If we don't, we're just like the rest of the people, the people that are doing things behind closed doors, that are having sex with boys, that are having sex with young men trying to give their life away to Christ, that are hitting on women and hitting on girls, that are having that are having um, unchaste sex, you know, and they're a priest or whatever. And I wish... My wish for 2019, really, is that, men, we stop letting people put stuff in the dark, make stuff come out in the light, and that we start beginning as men to pray that God gives us the wisdom and the and sends the Holy Spirit for us to stand up to this, no matter what happens to us. No matter if they take our jobs, no matter if they take our money, no matter if they take our cars, no matter... If they, you know, infiltrate our family and put us in prison and jail and stuff, this is more even no matter what happens to us is not as much as what Christ went through. And this is why I implore the priests of the Catholic Church, the bishops of the Catholic Church, the cardinals of the Catholic Church, the men, the lady of the Catholic Church to please begin to stand up and fight this because you know it's wrong. And you always, and we always ask ourselves, well, what can I do? I'm just a person. I'm just a lowly priest. I'm just a lowly bishop or whatever. Yeah, that's all fine. Humility and everything is all fine. But when evil has presented itself and we sit back as men and we don't say anything, 
just like last night, I was having a conversation with um, um, I met Deacon Harold Silvers for the first time, and we were over. Um, I was invited over there by our friends, the Lamarcks, and you know, this is one of the things we talked about: how men must begin to stand up. Women are waiting to sit back and see what we gonna do, what the men gonna do, because women inherently know. They know that as long as the men sit back, cross our arms, we don't say nothing, we allow the stuff to go, and we, you know, we allow, you know, the, we, no one wants to make a decision, no one wants to fight for Christ, you know, no one wants to have any kind of argument or debate about anything. Everybody wants to just, well, let it go, it'll get better. It's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. And this is what we were talking about. If men don't stand up, it's, nothing's going to change. OK, I just wish that we we would see this and get our heads out of the stand and start learning our faith and more important, learn why this stuff is happening. It's not bad luck, gentlemen. It's not bad luck. Moving on. Realize these top 21 reasons are in no certain order as they all feed up on one another. So, what is the number 16 reason men have stopped passing on? I mean, what is the number 16 reason for the 2018 scandal? Here's what it is. Men have stopped passing on the faith to their children. This is so, so important. So, as we discussed in episode 15, you know, number 15 reason was men have stopped praying. So what's the natural consequence? <laughs> if, a man, if men aren't praying, what are we doing? We, yep, we as the spiritual head of the family, we begin to cease passing on the Catholic faith to our children. I'll tell you, I feel completely robbed that the faith was not basically, was basically ignored in my childhood. When I grew up, you know, sure, my grandmother, my grandparents, they tried, and my parents, they really tried, but the thing about the about anything in this world is about consistency. Some years we'd go to church, most years we wouldn't. You know, we went years and years without going to any church. And I'm not just talking about the Catholic church, I'm talking about the Protestant church, okay, a, a Baptist or whatever. And I feel so completely robbed. And I think about this a lot, you know, all the pain, all the suffering, all the, the ignorance that I've gone through over so many years and I didn't even know why and that's the reason why we must pass on the faith because the Catholic faith God's word has an answers to every question that we have if we seek it but if as a child you know you're 5 or 10 or 15 years old and no one has shown you the reason why you're here on this earth your real purpose as a man why you die, what happens when you die, all these critical, critical, life-changing answers that help guide your entire life, you go through life floundering. You really do, and it's completely unfair. Like my father, no one passed on the faith to him. Probably my grandfather, no one probably passed on the faith to him right. And so what happens, you have generations and generations and generations of men who do not understand their role and purpose as a man, so they screw stuff up. And I'm going to tell you, for the first 40-something years of my life, I did the same thing. And you look back and you go, man, if I'd have known this, if I would have known that. And another thing, too, you can't continue to blame your parents about the faith didn't get passed on or whatever. There comes a time in your life well, you have to understand that it's your responsibility as a man to seek the truth of God, to seek the truth of why you're here, to understand how the world really works. OK, so um, this is man malpractice to not pass on the Catholic faith to your children. I just don't mean the sacraments because everybody does that. Most of them I'm talking about teaching them why Things are the way they are. Why God? Asked. Just don't read off the Ten Commandments. You know what I'm saying? Go through the Ten Commandments and teach your children and have family discussions on why God asked this. And the main reason for every so-called rule 
in in the Christian faith is because God created us, right? And if someone creates you, if something creates you, like when you create a car or like when you create a TV or you do a drawing or whatever you do, you you know, you you make a you make a building, you are architect. You know how that thing you created worked. You know why it works. You understand why it works and why. So who is the who is the person or the being that knows most about why to do this? It's you, right? So God created us. So we must begin to put our trust into God and and follow his word. And more importantly, don't let these crazies out here change God's word and dilute it down. If you in front of a pastor, I don't care if you're in the Protestant church or if you're in the Catholic church, and every Sunday they get up there and all they do is talk about mercy, 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 and God loves you, and you know, God is gonna do this for you, and God's gonna give you all these blessings, and God's gonna do all these favors for you. All you gotta do is ask. Man, that stuff, that stuff gets old after about two or three sermons, dude. You need if you are in front of a priest or or a pastor and that's all they talk about is the mercy of God, there's a problem. If no one is in front of you talking about hell, death, judgment, and heaven, then though there's a serious problem inside in that person. So because that means that they're watering down the faith, they don't have the courage to preach the truth. And so what does that mean? What you do is not necessarily leave that church unless you're in a Protestant church. You need to be coming to the Catholic faith because you can only be saved for real in the Catholic church. Okay. No matter what nobody tells you, it's another delusion that people try to do. But anyway, what is your responsibility as a man to go out and understand these things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. These things are called the four last things. This is what bears fruit. OK, this is what brings the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, you know, gives you the wisdom to go out and find the truth of God. All right. Please do not settle for people because you can't control what a priest does. You can't control what your minister does in front of you. You can't control what the cardinals and the bishops and the pope do. You can't. But what, as I always say, you can't control your environment. You can you can influence it. You might not be able to control it, but you can influence what comes in and out of it. And as a man and the head of your family, you are responsible for your wife, your children. And if you're dating a girl, your job, you shouldn't be trying to talk about sex all the time. You also should be trying to talk about all this, you know, you know, let's go out, go to the movies. Let's go to the, let's go to the park and go to the amusement park about fun, 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 fun. If you were a girl, and, you, and you're dating this girl, which you shouldn't be dating, you should be courting her anyway, and all you sitting there talking about is how much fun we're going to have, fun, fun, fun. I'm going to tell you what, your conversations are become going to become totally boring. And I'm going to tell you, I've been there, and I've known so many guys over my life that have been there, and actually my kids too. I listen to my kids' conversations, and all everybody talks about is fun, fun, fun. And after a while, you can't talk about nothing because – you're all you're trying to do is have pleasure and guess what the conversations get old only thing you have is one or two word sentences with each other okay please understand this your job as the man is to lead the people lead the people where you want to be a leader or not that's what you've been called to do okay lead the people that means lead your environment lead your people at your work lead people in your family lead people in the relationships you in your children your wife your girlfriend Okay, and if your mom and daddy ain't got their stuff together, you leave them too. Okay, now moving on again. So, um, we men we're blind sometimes. We continue to rely on the natural world for protection. We forget that there are two rams, and the other is the supernatural world. I ask, what happens? To your wife, your children, your girlfriend, when you are not around and unable to physically protect them. See, you can't be around your woman 24 hours a day. So what happens? You need the help of the Holy Spirit, dude. Moreover, can the police get to your home or to the school or to your wife's job before the horrible happens? See, we think, well, we the man, you know, we don't worry about nothing. That's another problem with men. We don't, we don't try to solve nothing until this is imminent. Well, then most of the time it's too late, man. 
we need to put you to do preventative maintenance, which means if you put things into place and systems into place in your family and your relationships so that things you prevent these things from happening. OK, so, you know, you rely on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when you pray and you give homage to God, you get on your knees, you pray the rosary, you, you go to adoration, you go to daily mass, you know, you say your three Hail Marys, you invoke the supernatural world. And this is why you need prayer. Just like I said in episode 15, this is why you need prayer, dude, because the Holy Spirit, God himself, will come down and help protect your family spiritually from the physical horribles, from the physical horrors while you're not around. And what is, you know, really, what does that mean? You you are, as the man, you are, in, you are, tasked with the duty to protect and defend your family okay when you are absent this is one of your prime duties as a man given to you by god this is your right as a man this is why you can't let the government you can't let um child protective services you can't let anybody come in your home the government and 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 tell you how to run your home because you are the man there OK, and that's another reason what's going on in the church. See, that's what happened. The, 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 the pope, the bishops, the cardinals and the men of the church, they can't run their stuff. They can't run their house. So what happens? The government has to come in and make them and teach them how to run it and make them do it the way they think it should be done. The Catholic Church is getting sued all over the place again. And whose fault is that? Who are our leaders? What do the lady men do? What are we doing? We have to begin to stand up and help the Pope, help the priests, help the bishops, help all of them do their dang job. Give them courage. When a priest gets up in front of mass and he preaches on abortion or same-sex attraction or contraception or being a, or how to be a man and telling women they have telling women they have to be like the Blessed Mother, you as a man, the first thing you should be doing right when that darn mass is over is running to that priest and look at him in his face and say, Oh my God, father, what a great sermon you just did. Can you please give us more of that? Okay. Next. Um, what do I mean when I say, you know, protection? Okay. Just think of the hundreds of decisions your children make per day. Also the many evil influences that surround them. And many of us don't even know what evil really is. OK, evil is everything that your child comes across when you ain't around outside your home. Everything, every single thing. It's not just about being a serial killer or a rapist. Evil has many more facets than those atrocities. OK, so how do you ensure that they make the proper decision? I mean, your children, OK, not to smoke that joint. Not to sleep with that girl, not to allow a boy to get get her pregnant, not to skip class, not to lie to you about another bad thing they're doing. See, this is what happens when we believe we are God and that we are completely in control. Something catastrophic happens, then what do we do? Then we see we aren't in control all of a sudden. Then what do we do? We holler for Christ to run in like Superman to save us. But as I said in the last episode, do we really know God? Do you really know God? Why should he come in and save you? Why should he save us? Why should he save anybody when we've ignored him and proven to him that we don't want anything to do with him? See, we say we love God and we want to be with God and we want God and all this stuff and God help us and be in our corner, but we don't do nothing with it. We don't pray, okay? We don't do anything. You know, we barely go to church and then we don't want to we don't want to abide by the commandments or the Ten Commandments or the Gospels. We want to pick out what we want to do. We want to then, then we'll do that. That's not love for God. That's that's you being the God. You choosing when you want to be God's in God's favor and when you don't. And then when you you on your deathbed or your child dies or your your or, or your wife goes to jail or something crazy like that, what do you do? Then you call, you will, oh, Jesus, 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 please help me. Please help me. Please come up and save me. You don't raise your, your son right. Your son goes out and sleeps with everybody. 
Your son go out and rob people. Your son takes advantage of girls. He uses them up. Your son's a very selfish person. And then when your son goes to jail or your son gets a girl pregnant or has relationship problems with his, you know, with his, with his girl or his wife, first thing you're doing, oh, Jesus, 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 please save my son. Please save me. Please save me. What you got to do is save your son as a man before these problems happen. You save your daughter before these problems happen. And how do you do that? You get your butt on your knees and you ask guidance from God. Then you are in favor with God. And then what does he do? For one thing, he keeps evil. He keeps evil out of your home unless it has to do with helping your soul. He keeps evil out of your home so that, you know, your home has more peace and your family members are more at peace. Okay. So as God um, as God gave the responsibility to Adam for the natural world, you, the man, must grab hold of this duty and take it seriously. You must study and seek the true answers to how the world really works. Even if your faith is weak right now, you don't you have a duty to find out why? Why is your faith weak? Why don't you believe in God? Why don't you understand what this world's about? Why don't you understand your purpose as a man? Why don't you understand these things? Because you don't know your faith. You want to try to go learn your faith. And then you want to blame everybody else when your stuff don't go right. Okay? You are the man, the husband, the boyfriend. How much longer will you stand by and rely on haphazardness to rule your life? Stop thinking everything's bad luck. Stop thinking, well, this happened to me because my wife did this. This happened to me because the boss at my job did that. This happened to me because my girlfriend did this. She won't do that. She won't do this. It's everybody's fault but yours. But when are you as the darn man going to stand up and start taking control of your life through who? Through the help of God. That way, that is where you get your power from. That is where you get everything that you are as a man from. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it's time that you get in the saints get with these popes that know what they're talking about and these priests and get and learn what the Catholic faith is about. Okay. Next, this gives you, this gives them the means to deal with whatever happens in their life. You must pass on the faith to your family because this helps them to deal with issues in the supernatural and the natural world. When problems arise in their life and you're not around. This helps ward off disease, mental illness, bad decision making. What happens when you and your wife die? Who is there to protect your children and their children while you are six feet under? See, we don't talk about that. When you go, you don't. We don't teach our kids how to de how to survive in this world. And then when we die, we ain't there to tell them nothing no more. They're by themselves. I don't care if your kids are fifty or sixty years old. You have to prepare your children to live in this world. And I don't necessarily mean teaching them self-defense or how to deal with all this physical stuff or how to make all this money because eventually all that stuff runs out. You need the help and protection of the Holy Spirit. Basically, you've left them in a world full of wolves to devour them if you're six feet under and you haven't passed on the face to your children. Have you really done your job of protection? If you, if you don't, teach your children what who is the creator of the universe if you don't even know why god is the creator of the universe you have complete serious issues that means you don't even know the basics of the basics of the universe and how it works you think we was made for monkeys that's what happened when you don't understand how the world really works the universe really works you start to pick up all this stupid stuff that makes no logical sense. And then when somebody comes to you about, well, man, you know God is the real creator, you get all mad at him and think he's the crazy one. No, you're the crazy one that doesn't have the wisdom of God. You'll be surprised how much smarter you get when you start invoking the supernatural world, okay? Um, just like the current leaders in the Catholic faith, they don't realize that their failure to pray to truly believe in God, to truly live up to their commitment of spreading the true word of Christ at all costs has damaged the natural world. And the main cost has been the family, the center of the universe. For those of us that don't understand, the family, man, woman, children, God, church, faith, these are the center of the universe. Why? Because God sent all us here so that we can become saints, so that we can go back and be able to be pure enough to spend eternity with him. 
you can't be a tattered soul, an impure soul, and think you're going to be up with God for the rest of eternity. That's why we have to come here, and this life is a test. It's a test of obedience, of can you become pure, and can you be obedient until you die? And if you're not the most purest person, you're not in mortal sin, that means that you get to go to purgatory, and you get to get more fire, more training, <laughs> uh, more things um, to, to help make you pure so that one day you can spend and be presented toward the Father, okay? Um, and the, um, it, it, also, isn't it funny how no one listens to the men in the church anymore? Laity, the Pope, priests, uh, the, uh, the cardinals and stuff, no one really listens to them. Everybody shows up a good deal, but this is how you know that no one is really listening because of the fruits of what's coming out of the Catholic Church, the fruits. The fruits of the society. Our job as men is to influence the society, to influence the church, to, to be holy, do God's word, understand the saints, the doctors, the fathers of the church, and our, take our knowledge and our holiness and spread it to the rest of society. But we didn't, we're not doing that. How do I know this? Huh, same-sex marriage. Huh, abortion. Huh, killing of, of souls through contraception. Huh, People unchastely, all the men sleep with all the women. All the women sleep with all the men. None of the women want to be true women. They don't want to be like the Blessed Mother. They want to be like Ellen DeGeneres or Madonna or those kind, or, or those kind of impure women. No one wants to be who they are, who they were meant to be, which is to be great, a great soul before God. No one passes down the Catholic faith to their families anymore. No one wants confession to ward off mental illness and disease anymore. No one wants to give money to the church anymore because they realize that many of the leaders are really just politicians with religious garb on and pointy hats. No one wants to hear how Christ can save them, how he can protect their wives, their girlfriends, and children from evil. They have stunted the growth of the church through a lack of courage, a weak stance on abortion, and a never-ending focus on money, power, and ambition, just like any other man in this society. How different are our leaders? Are they really any different? Okay? As we look out over the country, abortion is on the rise, divorce is on the rise, suicide is on the rise, mental illness is on the rise, despair is on the rise, and the men in the Catholic Church continue to sit on their hands and do nothing but beg for money, blame everyone else for their woes, and eat bonbons. I will say, as I always say, the men in the Catholic Church have much to answer for before our Lord. What do you think? Send your questions or comments to Radical Questions at CatholicAlpha.com. Send your questions, show ideas, or comments to Radical Questions at CatholicAlpha.com. Again, please remember to share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. Our next segment is the Holy Lover segment. The goal of this segment is to give you a mission and purpose as a man. And that mission is for you to become a holy lover. What is a holy lover? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> a holy lover is two things. One, you becoming the man your wife needs. Two, you becoming the man God created you to be. We must understand those two things completely. 
and you single boys, you got to understand too, you have to be the man that your woman needs. Once you marry her, which what you should be talking with her about right now, you just not dating, trying to have sex. You're courting, trying to decide if this woman can help get you and make you a holy man and get you and your children to heaven before God. Talking about fun, fun, fun all the time ain't the way, okay? That's just a road to hell. It's a road to boredom, okay? So, like I said, one, you becoming the man your wife needs. Two, you becoming the man God created you to be. God has a purpose for all of us, and I know that's a cliche, and you hear it all the time. But, dude, if you don't try to understand why God sent you here, then you're going to spend like I did over 40 years of your life trying to figure out what the heck you are here for. What is your purpose? What's going on? And you know how I know it's not really money or career? Because I see all these dudes and all these people with money and career, and they are totally and completely sad. They try to act like they ain't, but they are. Middle class people, upper middle class people, blacks, whites, uh, uh, people from Mexico, it doesn't matter. Indians, it doesn't matter. We all are in the same boat. And another thing like my wife was talking about today, we got to stop looking at, you know, like uh, looking at ourselves as black or white or Indian or purple or Chinese or whatever. You are a Catholic. You are a man of God. You only have different races because of this part of the world you live in. That has nothing to do with you as a human person. Stop taking your culture and placing that above your purpose as a real man, as a Christian soldier. Your life will be a lot more peaceful, I guarantee it. So, what will becoming a holy lover accomplish? One, it'll keep you out of divorce court. Two, it'll keep you outside of the annulment tribunal, okay? Because when stuff don't work out, what is the first thing men try to do? Well, we're unhappy. We think we're unhappy. We don't want to fight. So what do we do? We try to get. We try to get out of the. We try to get out of the way. You know, we try to get away from it. We try to fight away. Get away. I got to get away from this. She's doing this. She's doing that. She's not making me happy anymore. Okay. She's not giving me sex. I got to get away from her. Okay. Next, keep your family together and prosperous. As a man, your job, your responsible is to keep your man, you keep your family together. Which is what. God, you, your wife, and your children. Keep them together. Keep them safe. Not just physically safe, but spiritually safe. Next, keep peace in your home. Next, keep your wife happy, fulfilled, and secure. Women are high maintenance. If you listen to episode, um, what is it, 13 and 14, Father Guardiola talked about that. How women are high maintenance. They need a validation of your love for them all the time. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means your wife is still loves you and she wants to do anything to please you. But you got to act right to get your head out your butt and show her attention, show her how much you love her and be and, and make sure she's happy for feel on a continual basis. You are responsible as the man. You are. You are. You are. Get it through your head. You're responsible for your girlfriend, for protecting her, for serving her, for defending her honor. You are responsible for your wife, for protecting her, for defending her, for being, for, for, for showing her that you are her champion, her hero, her knight in shining armor. See, we let the devil and people in this society touch, stop her from being chivalrous. Do you open the wife, the door for your, uh, do you open the door for your wife? Women don't even sit in the car, and it used to be, man, women would sit in the car, and if you didn't open the door, you know, they'd be looking at you like you're crazy. They're getting away from you because that means you don't, you don't hold her in high status. You don't hold her on a pedestal. And now, don't get me wrong, women, they got their faults too. But we ain't talking about women. We're talking about you. This is the Catholic Alpha Radical Podcast. This is not the Catholic Alpha Radical For Her Podcast. <laughs> okay, next. Give uh, becoming a holy lover. It gives you a guide and purpose as to what life is really about. And that ain't money and career. Next, help you save your soul and the souls of your wife and children through the help of the Holy Spirit. Next, holy lover, because you become a holy lover because it's it, let's be real. Ultimately, you are responsible for the success or failure of your marriage. 
Most men think that when things don't go right in their marriage, it's the woman's fault. But the problem is, when somebody come knock on the door, they don't ask, can I see Mrs. So-and-so? They ask your kids, is your daddy here? When you go up in front of God, right, it's the end of your life. You didn't pass through the deal. You up for the particular judgment, and you up before Christ, and you look around. Your wife ain't there. Your kids ain't there. Your mom and daddy ain't there. Your friends ain't there. The boss at your job ain't there. Who's there? Who's there? You by yourself. And Christ is going to ask you, man, what's up? <laughs> what's up, dog? <laughs> What's going on? What's wrong with your wife? Why, why'd you uh, divorce your wife and leave her? Why'd you leave your kids in a, in a den of wolves in that crazy society? You didn't protect them. Huh? Why didn't you pray? Why didn't you, as many times as the Holy Spirit tapped you on your shoulder and asked you to come and find and seek God, how many times did you deny that? See, you thought hell wasn't real, did you, dog? You thought hell was, you thought we were just playing. You thought the Gospels weren't real, didn't you? You believe the hype, didn't you? Well, guess what? Bam. Okay? Next. You are successful for the success and fi or failure of your marriage, man. And once you know that as a man, you can deal with it. You can deal with it better. You know, look, I can't just go be leaving everybody and abandoning my family like some crazy man. I have to make it work. And I'm telling you, you will feel so much more at peace once you know your mission as the husband, as the man, as the one who's really responsible, not your wife, not your mama or your daddy. Okay? Now, it's single. You need to become a holy lover so that you understand your duties and responsibilities in courting marriage, family, and society. Believe it or not, man, being single, first of all, it ain't all it's hyped up to be, is it? Is it really? You by yourself all the time. Oh, then you go, well, I won't be by myself no more. I'm going to go find me a girl to sleep with. Then you sleep with her, and then, you know, we want to get rid of her because she becomes too clingy. Or she ain't the, she's the woman you thought she was going to be. She's not pure. She's not, she's not virtuous. She's not trying to do anything but sit there and smoke a joint every day. Or all she wants to do is have fun. She has no depth to her. You should have thought about that before you slept with her, dude. This is why it's important for you as a man. I don't care if you 17 and you're ready to start courting or if you're 85 and you are still trying to find a woman to spend the rest of your life with. The rules don't change, man. The rules don't change. These things, the way God is asking you to do things don't change because this is what makes you happy. I know a lot of these older people, these elderly people, I love them, but here's what they do. Nowadays, you, these 50, 60, 70, 80 year old people moving in together and having sex and stuff. Now, people say, well, how are they having sex at 80 years old? Dude, there are a lot of 80 year old men whose sexuality still works and is still strong. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. There are 70 year old men, 60 year old men that have sex all the time. So, people, that is not the deal. If you want to have, if you find, a, if you love a woman and you say you care about a woman so much, I don't care if y'all 80 years old, you go find a priest, you get in front of the uh, in front of God, and you get your marriage blessed, and you get married, then you can have all the sex you want. You can do it the right way. You get all the graces from that so that you can get your wife or that woman you say you love to heaven. Okay, next. Also, how to court to find, if you're single, how to court to find the woman God is trying to show you. Basically, to find the mate that will help get you and your children to heaven. Okay? And lastly, how to learn how to fix yourself first before blaming God, your wife, your children, your girlfriend, society, the government, your friends, your parents, and your siblings. We as men have to stop punking out and try to blame everybody else when something goes wrong in our life, especially when we are the perpetrators and the cause of that, okay? And many of the times, even if you're not the cause of it, you are indirectly the cause of it because what? You're not relying on God as guidance. I know many times in my life, so much crap happened in my life, and I'm thinking, man, what the heck's going on? Because really, I'm not usually one, even when I wasn't Catholic and loving Christ and stuff, 
I was always one to look at myself first before trying to blame everybody else. I don't know. I just had some sense about that, that blaming other people just never seemed to work out anyway. So when, 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 when you find things that go wrong in your life, it's because you're not relying on God. You're not engaged in prayer in the supernatural world, dude. And you can sit, people, you can sit there as a man and deny everything I'm saying. But I'm telling you, like I said in episode 15, this stuff works, dude. It really does. And even if you don't think it's going to work, don't you at least as a man, for the sake of your marriage and your wife, your children, your, the relationship of the girl you're with now, have a duty to at least explore it, to find out if it really is, and not just listen to all these ignorant people out here that don't know nothing, the only selfishness, and uh, only only... They only um, deal with what they want to do and only to feel concerned about themselves. Come on, man. Think about that. Okay. Understand holy lover status is a journey, just like I've been talking about. This is a journey, a journey you must complete for the reward of a whole and complete marriage and family grounded in holiness. So let's move forward, fellas. Bam. So now I'm going to we're going to talk about Holy Lover as far. I want to read this quote. And this is a quote that was written to give men a type of a battle cry. OK, because there is a crisis in marriage. For, there is a marriage crisis right now. And there is even more so a man crisis. There's a marriage crisis because there's a man crisis <laughs> because men, we aren't doing our job. And I know he's like, why does he keep blaming me? Why does he keep blaming the men? Why is that all just our fault? Hell if it ain't. You know why it's your fault? Because God said it's your fault. Because you are responsible. And I know I keep saying that. You as the man are held responsible. You were given authority by God over this ram. Okay? Please understand that. Please understand that. Okay? And if you don't understand it, you you have a you have to try and find your find it in yourself, find it in yourself the will. Make yourself do what you're supposed to be doing. It's not about pleasure, fellas, all the time. I love vacations too. I need one right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you know, I love fun too. I love going to movies. You know, I love like my friend, you know, my friend was, Joe was talking about taking me to this called Top Golf or something like that, where you can go and um, you go to this big driving range. It has like three or four levels, this huge building, and you hit the ball out into the, the thing. It's open like 24 hours a day, you know, and, you know, I want to have fun, too. I want to have fun with my wife. I love spending time with my wife. I love spending time with my children and stuff. I really do. But I'm telling you, man. I'm just not saying that. If I didn't like spending time with my kids and my my wife and stuff, I'd say it. But I don't. I love spending time with my kids. My kids were homeschooled, so we have always spent time together, okay? But, man, that stuff, dude, is not – you're here for that, but your job is to go out and be the man and, and, and prove that, to, that you're the man and get and help guide your family to, to the correct, the, the correct uh, places, all right? So – Quote, the battle. Christian soldier, the spiritual battle is upon you. No longer can you remain aloof. You are made for combat, made to fight the inner spiritual battle against evil daily. The time has come to be a man of courage, to don your armor, pick up your shield, unsheathe your sword. In preparation of the upcoming physical battle. And for whom do you battle? The battle for Christ. The battle for your marriage. The battle for your family. And if you have anything left, the battle for your very soul. End quote. Catholic Alpha. Now look. That is a powerful quote, and it took me a long time to come up with it. But what that is saying is, man, we are a Christian soldier. We are tough like Christ. Christ wasn't no punk. 
Everybody tries to portray him as that, but he wasn't. Christ, if you look really analyze, and that's another thing wrong with us, we don't analyze when critical thinking anymore. If you really an analyze God and Christ and what he did, think about it, man. You are omniscient, you are an omniscient being. <laughs> and you said, well, in order to save all these crazy people, because I want them to be pure and spend the rest of eternity with me and give them a chance, I'm going to go down as a lowly one of them and I'm going to go inside the womb of a woman and suffer there. I'm going to be born and I'm going to go suffer there as a child. My mother, I got to do what my mom and daddy say do. With what kid likes that? Now, this is God now. <laughs> So his mom and he got to do what his mom and daddy says do. Then as a teenager, he has to deal with all these crazy other teenage kids and all these other crazy people. Think about what I'm saying. Then what does he do? Then for that, then he he grows up, and then he's trying to preach to these people that have no idea what the heck he's talking about. He's got to speak in parables that nobody understands unless he takes them in the back room and explains it to them more simply. So that think of that frustration. Then, not only that, for 33 years, Christ knew he was going to, even from his birth, he knew that he was going to have to go through the passion. He was going to have to be tortured and betrayed, and beat up, and kicked in the butt, okay? Think about that. And then, on top of that, you get put on a cross with all the stakes in your arm. This is complete courage. This is what he showed us men how to really do it. By knowing it, we, that's why I speak about this, man, because Christ showed us, man. He showed us, dude, how to be real men, what being a man is really about. It's about service, meekness, humility, okay, patience. What is the saying? Humility defeats evil. Anytime you're arguing with somebody, instead of sitting there fighting back, you become humble, you know, you ask questions. Let them get it out. And then you try to answer the stuff. Because a lot of times doing in battle, man, going in a in a in a voice in a, a vocal battle, man, is it's it doesn't cause anything. Somebody has to be the real man, don't they? And this is why I'd say about Christ. We have to understand what as God, what he truly did. Have you ever considered what I just said? Have you ever sought sat down and thought about if you were an omniscient being and then you went through all this stuff to save some people that were completely they were less more less than ants to you than anything basically an amoeba less than an amoeba really why would a god do that why would he come and do that man and that's why you must understand and contemplate your mortality so that you understand what god was trying to teach you if all you do is be effeminate and emasculated and think about how much fun you can have every day where is your life really headed anyway man in order to become a holy lover, you must understand what true masculinity is. And that simply is using Christ as your model. I just spoke on that. Man crisis, marriage crisis, the battle for masculinity, dude. Whether you want to believe it right now, there is a battle for your masculinity. Are you going to walk around looking like a woman all the time? These, Like I'm looking at the NFL yesterday. I don't even really want my boys to even watch it. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to turn them off. You got these big grown 50, 60 year old men with and these little these young boys, 25, 30 years old, 40 years old, all of them got these big two, three carat earrings in their ear. Is that masculine? Or is that this them being in the mirror wanna look like a woman? Want to show everybody how pretty they are. Being pretty is not masculine. Was Christ like that? Is that what Christ did? Did he walk around trying to show everybody how pretty he is by putting on earrings and stuff, wearing pink? You know, and, and everybody dog from, you know, don't like when I say that, but man, wearing pink, pink is a feminine color, dude. It's a feminine color. 
That's what women use. That's what one of the colors that we are that is used to distinguish between a man and a woman. And men, we have been conned into thinking, well, I'm more man. I'm just as masculine as anybody as if I were pink. No, you ain't, dude, because you got little boys looking up to you that go, wow, that pink is really pretty. I think I would put it on, too. And then when the little boy start acting like a little girl, you get mad at him. Come on, man. Please listen. You as a man have a responsibility to portray the best masculine man that you can portray as a person, as a human person. You cannot walk around having any kind of feminine qualities to you. Why? Because boys pick up on that. Women, believe it or not, do not want wussy men. They really don't. They want strong, virtuous, holy men. I tell you what, man. I'm just going to be completely honest. I know dudes, man, that are holy, dude. And even with me, when I started getting more involved with God in the Catholic Church and understand my role and trying to be a virtuous man, women look at me completely different. They look at my friends different. Yeah, there might be this six foot three, completely handsome dude that looks like St. Joseph that, you know, he's got very pr beautiful brown skin or really beautiful white skin or yellow skin and he is completely handsome he walks completely walks really good he dresses really well he has a nice deep voice women love that they love it because he's handsome but i tell you what once a woman they she once she gets with that dude and finds out he's selfish is not and not going anywhere she don't want him no more she's disgusted with him that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. I don't care if you look like, oh, boy, the, the dude that was with the, the Notre Dame dude. What was his name? The hunchback of Notre Dame. If you look like that or if you if you look like, you know, they think, you know, Antonio Banderas or something or somebody handsome like that. Women don't really care what women truly in their soul and their minds really care about is where are you leading them instinctually? Do you want to make her a real woman? Do you want to serve her and show her and, and be a, a, a devoted husband to her? Give her children. And women always say, well, I don't, you know, these women don't want to say that they want to have children. Something's wrong with them. They always say that until the right man come along that they want to have all his babies. Ask them. They'll tell you. Please, man. Listen, God knows what he's doing, fellas. God knows what he's doing. Okay? Next. According to to the new evangelization project article documenting the serious Catholic man crisis in the United States. The article states one in three baptized Catholic men have left the faith. And of those who remain 50 to 60% of them are casual Catholics, men who don't understand and don't practice the faith note. And before you get out up the Protestants it's the same in the Protestant faith too. My question is where are the real men? What are we doing? We bitch and complain about our wives or the women in our lives. We complain about presidents and politicians. We complain about our job and how we get no respect. We complain about how we're treated in society and about how men are emasculated. Hell, most of us don't even realize, like I just talked about, that we are that our masculinity has been stripped down to our undershorts. This is how completely unaware we are. Listen. Honesty is the only course here. We can't fight what's going on with masculinity without Christ. It's not going to happen. No one will respect us. No one will listen to our pleas. Why? Because they don't care anymore. In fact, to the secular world, we are basically irrelevant, useless. Like I was just talking about, man, women look at men of God completely different than they look at the regular Joe, no matter how handsome he is. And you got to understand that you, I don't care what, what kind of man you think you are. If you're not journeying toward holiness and seeking God, your life is going to be meaningless. The older you get, the more you realize it. Okay. Um, our fathers and our father's fathers have abandoned Christ. And I spoke about that earlier. I mean, what do we expect would happen? Brother, we're trying to fight evil with evil. This strategy doesn't work. It's impossible for it to work. 
Furthermore, Christ needs warriors, Christian soldiers, men willing to lay down their lives, like I spoke about in the other episode on um on Vatican II. You know, we didn't fight for Christ during Vatican II. Why? Because we was cowards. We didn't stand up and say no in that chamber. Those priests that and those bishops that didn't agree didn't stand up and ready to go physical battle because sometimes physical battle is what it takes to die and fight for Christ. We think it's all about mercy, mercy, mercy. Man, doing the crusades, man, when the Muslims were trying to rape, were raping our women, taking our, taking our, uh, taking our um, land, and killing our priests and stuff. The priests stood up and became warriors for Christ, dude, and fought back. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted, man. There comes a time where physical battle is necessary. They try to say that the crusades that we were, the Christians were the ones aggressive. No, we wasn't. Look it up. There's a book out there. I forgot the name of it, but I'm going to post it in the show notes, too, about the crusades, man, and the truth about it. Christians, if you're following Christ, you're not taking the physical battle lightly, man. Do you? How long do you think it took for those Christian priests to stand up and start fighting back? The Pope was the we was the leader. The Pope engaged in it. He fought in it. You think a Pope wants to come down and have to fight in an army to protect it? Yes, he will for Christ. He will. And those men in Vatican II didn't do that. Okay. So, coming up next, brothers, we're trying to fight evil with evil. This trade doesn't work. It's impossible for it to work. Furthermore, Christ needs warriors. He needs more than a robot, a go-along to get along emasculated weakling, and that's what we are right now. Most of us, many of us, are emasculated weaklings. We think, you know, you know that, you know, not standing up for Christ or preaching the, giving somebody the truth. Well, we'll just, you, you just, brother, if you love somebody, you're going to tell them the truth. So what happens? You just sit there and just let that person go on and be ignorant. That is not what a true friend, a true man is, man. You, if that person is your friend and they're out sleeping with girls or sleeping with all the, sleeping out with tons of girls, not even tons of girls, one girl. And you don't bring him to the side and tell him as a man to man that, hey, man, you're going to you destroying that woman's soul. You're really hurting her if you don't marry her. And that's just a simple way. If Of course you do if your friend's going to get mad at you. Of course he's going to get mad at you, dude. But it doesn't matter. If he's your real friend, he'll go off and think about it, and he'll come back and be okay. But I'm going to tell you what. Sometimes you will lose a friend when you tell him the truth. And even then, if you do, he wasn't your friend anyway. Okay? Christ needs us to prepare ourselves to sacrifice as he did at any time. He needs you to be remarkable, to be a freaking rebel. That's why I call this podcast Catholic Alpha Radical. Because today, there is no one that we need to stand up for Christ, dude. And that is what a radical is right now, going against the grain. Right now, it ain't cool to be hanging out with Christ. And even if a lot of people do want to hang out with Christ, they don't understand the real Christ. They don't understand the man, the masculine, the warrior Christ. They only understand the little one that everybody be trying to make him look at to be like some weak dude, and he wasn't. Again, gentlemen, we must begin to understand the art of manliness. We are... If we are to regain the place God meant for us to have, only then can peace and holiness fill our lives. Bam! Please remember to share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. So, in conclusion, as we always do, we end with a quote from Pope Benedict XVI. Quote, society offers you comfort, gentlemen. But you weren't made for comfort. You were made for greatness. So go forth, Christian soldier.
The spiritual fight is up on you. Fast, pray, and prepare for battle. Thank you, Christian soldier, for listening in today. Remember, Catholic Alpha Radical is designed to repair, ignite, and once again spark the fire back into your marriage or relationship. So, what's your next action step? One, share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Two, rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Three, subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email now.